This is Raymond. Raymond is a pangolin, a critically endangered species known to be the world's most trafficked mammal. He looks fine now, but just 10 hours ago, he was one of the thousands of animals being bought and sold on Malaysia's online wildlife marketplace. In Malaysia, illegal wildlife are being sold on social media as exotic pets. Business is booming. We looked at the situation first in 2014 in Malaysia. And at that time, we were just looking at 14 Facebook groups. We found 68,000 active members in those groups. You know, people looking, buying, selling. But today, the trade has spread. It's grown bigger. There are hundreds and hundreds of groups out there. And not just on Facebook. Any uh, electronic platform to buy and sell, uh, wildlife is being bought and sold on those. These traders mostly supply exotic pets, but we found that they can also supply animals threatened with extinction. So these are messages exchanged with an online wildlife trader whom we approached to buy a pangolin from. Now, um, he says he usually does not offer pangolins for sale to customers, but once we approached him to buy a pangolin, he was basically able to offer us one within a week. And since then, whenever he has a pangolin, he would offer it to us. So this uh, modus operandi is quite new, uh, like uh, two years ago. Romley has been monitoring the online wildlife trade for over six years. He reports any illegal activity he witnesses to the authorities. Previously, everyone was like, brave, uh, they were brave enough to do cash on delivery because that time the enforcement wasn't very strict in this uh, wildlife trade via social media. A number of them got caught and they are actually being brave as well because they actually changed the modus operandi by, selling, uh, by sending the animals via the bus. The customer pay through bank transaction. They will actually not see the seller. According to Ramli, this modus operandi was started by one particular trader. Which one do you say is the most active online wildlife trader now? Currently, it's Kojora Pets. Journalists and netizens have exposed Kojora Pets before. Even naming the person behind it. However, authorities have been unable to act. Jura's pets uh, started uh, way long ago on his Instagram account was like 2015 or early 2016. So once his pages gets attention, then he actually shut down the page and open another new page with a different name. The phone numbers, the bank accounts remains the same. You can just change his account names, but then at the same time, he's the same person. With the help of enforcement officers, Rage set up a purchase. We wanted to see if we could trace this crime back to the trader. So from what we know, the bus is coming from Pahang, which is around four hours away from KL, which is where we're at, and um, it should arrive in uh, the next 15 minutes. Kamu tahu ke dalam ini apa? Atau ah? Kalau saya mau hantar barang lain, kamu boleh tolong ah? Kotak macam ni dua ringgit naik. Eh, murahnya? Ni macam ni hidup ni mahal sikit ah. Berapa? Biasa 30 ah. Tapi setiap hari ada jalan ke macam mana? Hari hari ada. Kutuklah. Enforcement officers advised against making any arrests. Under current laws, there simply isn't enough evidence to convict the trader. The trader is not in contact with the animal, and the law requires enforcement agencies to catch uh, a person in possession of the animal before they can be charged in court. So that is one of the difficulties with uh, online wildlife trade, because uh, trying to catch an illegal online wildlife trader is like trying to catch a shadow. Anyone can set up an account under any name, not necessarily their own. So, you know, hunting them down is really, really quite difficult. And making the connections that are necessary to prove a case in court 
is also very difficult. A crime is only committed if there is an exchange of uh, goods. So you, you have to catch a person uh, at it. That is, uh, if is, is, the goods are exchanging hands and money is being paid for, uh, for that. And then, yes, then the law uh, will, will come into force to, to take action against the people who have done this. The ministry is planning to table amendments to the Wildlife Conservation Act this year. It has proposed adding a section that will prohibit online promotion of wildlife. We successfully arranged two such things. But it still wasn't enough. Online wildlife traders like Kajora Pets continue to operate freely. However, consumers are as much to blame as traders. One of the solutions is probably changing the law, the way the law is worded, uh, because that is an obstacle to enforcement agencies at the moment. As we understand it, the law is going to be amended and there are going to be new uh, clauses included which address this problem specifically. But really, the most important thing in this fight against wildlife trade is for people to stop buying. For as long as there is demand, there will always be supply. So it is important that we educate our younger generation about how to live with this wildlife in a different manner rather than having them caged up in your houses. So I think this is, this is purely awareness and education that we have to emphasize on for a long term. The next day, our rescued pangolin was examined by wildlife department's vets. First, he was given a name. In our form, in our reports, we will give names. So easier to refer. Easily we will ask the owner. I thought of the name Raymond. Raymond, eh? Raymond had to go through a barrage of documentation procedures and assessments. Not easy for someone who just last night had survived five hours in a box in the boot of a bus. It wasn't easy for the vets either. Raymond needed to be measured and weighed. Then, the number of scales along the length of his body are counted. This helps with species identification. Samples are taken, including tick samples, hair samples, and blood samples. Finally, he was given an identity chip. This chip helps researchers and enforcement officers identify animals that have been rescued before. <laughs> Is it calm enough, that's why? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a bit calm now. <laughs> now properly documented and diagnosed as healthy, Raymond is ready to be released back into the wild. Pangolins are nocturnal animals, so they are usually released at night. After at least two days in captivity, Raymond doesn't take to freedom as quickly as we'd hope.
In unfamiliar surroundings, Raymond resorts to his usual defense mechanism, and he stays that way for over 30 minutes. Finally, he smells freedom. A lot of these animals do not survive the journey, do not survive the smuggling experience. But um, people very often tell us that why they buy a cute wild animal is because I love it and I want to care for it. But there is very little understanding of all the terrible things the animal itself had to go through to reach you as a pet owner. Is that love? You really have to ask uh, yourself whether your intentions are borne out by the whole trade. 